Hello and welcome back and it's me and Eddie the Web Guy and we're going to be doing a rounding up of a number of brands that we saw at Cobitex. I know there was a hell of a lot of content during that time but really what I want to talk about and summarise is what we learn about individual brands whilst out there. Now today I want to focus on Synology. Let's face it for a number of you out there they're still the tippity top of the NAS food chain. Now I've gone out of my way, I've only been back about 48 hours to do only really tell Ed little bits and bobs and he, you're aware of most of the stuff that was on YouTube and now compares and stuff. So of all the things that I brought back and the information I brought back from Taiwan and their event and their solutions and a lot of that enterprise level stuff, what was the big takeaway for you that you thought was the most interesting? That's definitely and we're being caught uh, put well, on the table. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure when they are going <laughs> to release it officially but that, that's a big cha game changer as you said mm. already on the videos. Because finally, people don't need to think about do they need to upgrade um, NAS with SSD cache or do they need to uh, go for 10 gigabit option? No, they can have both. I mean, it's amazing. The, I mean, for those that aren't aware, for checking the other video, do check it out. There's a lot more hands on with the card itself. Um, I believe it was called the E10M20, they were branding it. And it is uh, a card that they've announced. It's not going to be released toward, until towards the end of the year, which is a combination NVMe SSD and 10 GBE port. And again, I'm sure a number of you are aware, but for the four or five of you that aren't, this has been a big, big demand thing from Synology audiences because so many of their devices, I've got a few off camera that I should have put on the table, have only got one PCIe upgrade slot. So the result is that if you want to take advantage of that slot, you end up, ended up having to choose between installing SSDs with an NVMe card, such as the M2D18, or you wanted to install 10 GBE ports using the E10G18. And again, super cool that I know that. But if you're only at one slot, you might have had to use like SATA-based um, hard drives, 2.5 inch, and use up some of your bays. But it became really annoying for a number of you out there that you were forced to choose one or the other. So it was great to see that Synology, rivaling the likes of QNAP, who already have a card like that out there with their QM2 series, are finally giving in and releasing a combination of these two devices in a single card. And you're right, Eddie, it's, for me it was the big, big takeaway. They didn't highlight, highlight it anywhere near as much as they should have. Do you have more details about it? Like what sort of uh, PCI slot is going to be X2, is going to be X4, X16? Um, one would presume it's going to be a times 8. Uh, I think it's a, a PCIe times 8 times 3. I know it was on the video. Um, but like I say, they really did not go out of their way to highlight it. This card was just sitting there on top of a bunch that's of other devices. That's going to be because it potentially could be faster than any of QNAP cards. Of course, which yes. I think the next four or X2. And also, they're adopting the full, full latest length of NVMe as well. Those enormous cards, it supports all four lengths. Now, they said it was two slots inside again, much like the M2D18. Um, and it had that one port on the end of 10 GBE. I was surprised it was only one port. That surprised me. I don't know if that's a limitation of the hardware or QNAP the PCIe. Does the same. Exactly, there must be something about the Aquantia chip, which yes, I'm, they, didn't, they didn't even say what the controller was that they're going to be using. One would assume it's the Aquantia, because they're pretty much cornering the market yeah, on that probably. stuff. Because on Intel-based cards you could see two ports mm. or more. And also it opens up the door to what about devices that have got multiple PCIe slots, such as talking more about the new releases they covered, some of those flash station and SAS models, and the U3-3200. Those devices have got multiple PCIe slots, if you install multiple of that card inside those devices, do you have better RAID options for those NVMEs? You know, for yeah, read write caching and, and stuff. Well done, yeah. And, and you actually do two cards. Oh, two. one. Well, again, there was so little information Why about not? that. Now, another and thing. Can you, can you do storage on them, or there's no update? On, on that, or is it just for cash still? Again, I assume it is still for cash, but that that was a very interesting point there as well. And I mean, I'm going back to Taiwan, uh, Taipei in a couple of months again for some other events when we're out there. So I'm going to do another whole Q and A, hopefully. So do bung your questions in the comments, and we will go through them. But um, this was one of several examples of things at Synology's event that, although a number of you, if you look at the Q and A that we did with Synology last week you felt like 10 GBE wasn't addressed in the way that it should. And I know you felt that way yes. in quite vehement uh, terms for someone who is such a big fan of Synology. Um, but that card for me was them seeing the way mar the market's going and demand is. And another example was the graphics card enabled DVA3219, that surveillance model. The fact that that device is a disk station and a surveillance station was good, but they were quite, you know, they went at pains to point out the card can only be used in surveillance at this time. 
Yes, which is a good thing anyway. At least they do some bit of innovation mm. because it's going to speed up the processes when they do face recognition and object recognition and all these things. They do require actually, you know, hardware mm. performance and, and graphics card is the one which is needed for these sort of functions. Mm. It would be slowing down the NAS if it was because people do use surveillance and normal NAS, but when you start filtering things down, the CPU actually really max out at some point. But the fact that it's got that Deviton Atom CPU inside, the idea of being able to utilize a GPU card, it's quite nice. The idea that you've got that option there. Exactly, yeah, I, same like having this uh, hardware transcoding and hardware encryption, now you've got literally hardware, mm -hmm. um, you know, artificial intelligence sort of system there. So, but I mean, again, it didn't have a PCIe slot because that slot was being occupied by the graphics card. So, 10 GBE was off the table with that, although you did have four ports. It would be interesting actually that. to remove the card and see, does it work? Can we actually install uh, yeah, 10 gigabit? That would be nice. I mean, we might try that, who knows? That could hugely invalidate any kind of warranty on that. I actually, it would do, let's face it. But to me, those are examples of Synology really like changing the way they do things. I mean, again, Synology is not a company that changes lightly. For those that have followed Synology over the last few years, which, you know, people like myself have done, then you see that for them to make a big change it takes a lot of work from them. They like to really get the most out of their existing hardware to push how well it supports the SM. And like last, the last generation, the last generation for last, the 18 series, when we started seeing those Realtek 64-bit um, chips, those more powerful, more efficient ARMs. It took a long time for them to do that, you know? Yes, because they do similar, similar like Apple. They're not gonna implement all the latest technologies straight away. They'll let Samsung or other like big companies to just test the, uh, the technology mm. out. And if it works and it's proven okay, then, then they put that in. Because then it's for certain it's gonna work. Mm. So they never make a mistake sort of in their development. But at the same time, we can move on to the UC3200 that I think at the time of recording, a couple of days ago, my video went live there. Well, when I was at the show, uh, there was a guy there, really, really friendly guy on the stand. I'm really sorry, I, I've got his business card in my pocket right now. I'd love to go through my wallet on camera. It's a bit odd. Um, but he showed me the disaster recovery of the 3200. It wasn't planned. It wasn't, you know, it was completely impromptu. Hence why it was just filmed off camera like a Blair Witch Project, poor sequel. Um, but with that whole pulling the controller and stuff, that was done live. And the recovery on that was genuinely phenomenal. Yes. The fact that you could utilize both of those controllers for separate things. So you had two CPUs inside doing different things. And despite that, the system within, I think it was like 12 seconds, had already carried everything over to the yeah. other controller. There is an improvement, definitely, because last time when we went to Synology event in London last year, they did the same thing um, as well, dual controller switch over, and it took like around 30 seconds. Mm. So now it's like, they have half the time, you know? I mean, it's, it's situation dependent, but it was the idea that they were using a virtual machine to act, a virtual machine that was on the device to view all that happening. And that was fantastically innovative. I've not seen that from any other brand. So let's not sell Synology short in terms of investment and innovation, although I do say another company, beginning with the letter Q, are, I believe, the, the biggest innovators in the industry. There's no denying it, that there are a number of ways in which Synology also push the boundary, but typically it's always in the software department that we see them making those innovations. Yes, exactly, like you were mentioning, that it's dual controller. I, I think QNAP doesn't do that, that you actually utilize both of the controllers. For different things, yeah. Because Synology does, they were probably thinking like, like, okay, what's the point having now this extra controller on the side doing nothing if mm. you can actually make it work? And if it fails, then okay, goodbye and, and switch over. I mean, obviously, we're talking about... that's a software thing again. We're talking about something fantastically enterprise, but it's still something that might filter down into other devices. And that, you know, SHA, Synology High Availab Availability, can be used on pretty low spec NASes by plus comparison. <coughs> a few plus series desktops, you've got two NASes synced together with that heartbeat connection, you're laughing. So it, that kind of innovation, that software innovation does carry forward, not just this in, enormously enterprise thing. Um, and then we can talk about the Flash Station series. Now, the Flash Station series is again, woefully enterprise. It's so out there in the distance, it's unreal. And the, like, they had, they're using that um, Intel Xeon Silver, the yeah, two of them inside one device, that 
flash station, they're enormously, but I mean, out of this world power, the IOPS. Well, that's perfect. Gonna... If you decide to open your own sort of uh, web hosting company, if you want to, you can have so many really mm. clients on it, and yeah. you just sell, sell licenses for but, virtual machines. But one user pointed out something rightly. Even though you've got this fantastically powerful box, it was using SATA. There was no U2 NVMe or NVMe slot. It was just, why was that? Why is that Synology? Because I'm really confused that U2... You probably think that when, because it's, this flash station got, got how many, 24 bays? So when you build an array, like RAID across all these disks, then you don't need anything more because you get so much more speed than you can actually push through the, any 10 gigabit mm. or 40 gigabit um, you know, connectivity. It's, but the thing is, that still feels to me like a little bit of compromise. Why should we, them just saying this is enough, you know, enough, enough. But even though the CPU and the memory and the ports and the PCI expandability and all this stuff was incredible, it was like a self-imposed bottleneck. Yes. So it would be weird that they didn't like have a block of U2 port or something just on the side, just a boop, that's there. But yeah. apart from that, I cannot fault those devices for their intended purpose. Yeah. But you will notice that across all the range, because when you go to the performance page of Synology, you'll see that 918 is maxing out the 200, and 418 is the 400, uh, 200 as well. And mm. every, in every single performance test, you will see that the max speed is actually the speed of the port at the back yeah, of the technology yeah. in every single Same. situation. So there is a bottleneck on every single pe uh, box. That's correct. why and they still correct. don't listen to install 10 gigabit on the board mm. even though the performance results show that they have to do that um, and of course there were other things that are still in upcoming content still yet to be produced here there was stuff like um the the synchronization of synology drive this idea of having and i've talked about it vaguely on the channel but we're doing some more live demos coming soon of having that synchronized folder on your localized machine and how it synchronizes and the time-based synchronization and versioning and it was just really smoothly done. It's another thing from Synology that I've always loved. Their, their software being so fluid and easy. And the synchronization with Synology Drive was another great example of that. But then at the same time, you know, heads and tails, they were then talking about the Slim series. So the 419 Slim and the 620 Slim. So they've upgraded, they've changed it to this newer model and it's a lovely, beautiful device. Yeah, you like them. I don't yeah. see a point of those. <laughs> but yeah, but it's. I just think that was a weird thing to have there. The six one nine slim. I don't understand it. I think six bays. Like it's literally bees trapped into the. No, tiny no. Thing. I'm talking about the. Sorry, the four one nine slim. Four bay. The four bay. Now the specs for that, and I will of course do a versus and the usual stuff. But the four one nine slim, I don't get that. I just don't understand. If they'd stuck a Realtek 64-bit inside, I'd have got that. If they'd um, expanded the number of bays, I'd have got that. But it's so similar to the previous version, I don't understand it. Oh, there's nothing to understand. It's just everything. is that naked profiteering? Is that what you're saying on camera, Eddie? <laughs> I just you know. It's 2019, so you need to put model number 19 at the end or 20. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I think. I don't understand the audience for that. So I, I think the slim models, In general, the, the slim models have a purpose. I do, gen I champion them because I know there is utilisation of people I spoke to, like you guys out there, people that live on houseboats, people that live on caravans, people that live on remote off sea, people that need stuff that's low very power. low power consumption, and what they need is a centralised backup or a surveillance solution. That, for those people, it's important. But what I'm saying is, we have a unit there that is the upgrade from the 2016 series that is had 0.3 gigahertz power increase per core. <laughs> I think the mem I think the memory might be 512 compared with 256. Don't quote me on that. But I'll wait to the verses. But it's compared to everything else we've discussed in this video. It's fantastically underwhelming, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. I don't understand these small boxes really. Don't really understand them. Why would you need them? <laughs> oh, no, I think there's a lot of purposes for them. I just don't understand even within that remit and that world why the 419 slim exists. Because there was one innovation at least that I think you know you can put um, bigger drives, 2.5 yes. inch, but the like um the f the, the 15 mil height drive, so yeah. five terabytes. So that four bay can contain 20 terabytes. That's why they didn't release, I think, the last model because they you couldn't, I think, actually put these. Um, Perhaps I, again, that, I mean, we're speculating a bit there, but because then they were 
well, the cap mm. to the two terabyte capacity at that time, and now it's five terabyte each. So. But then I think those drives, they're not the cheapest. And we're, I mean, we're at the moment, we're talking about 16 terabyte Seagate Ironwolves. The idea of a four bay with 20 terabytes is going to cost infinitely more than that. And then you raid it and lose a drive anyway. It does seem a false economy given the power of the device, but we'll wrap things up on that one. But I mean, as I say, we will be returning to Taipei in a few months for some other uh, content coming very, very soon. And what I would also highlight is a little error I made in the other videos, it's very important. It's to do with when you go for some of the flash station or SAS based models, we haven't really touched on those SAS ones either, um, to go, with regards to Synology's premium service. Because stuff like um, the Synology replacement service, they've all got five years of warranty. But I did say that um, a lot of these devices will give you that Synology replacement service for those years and of course the Synology premium service included. But I know that isn't fully covered all over the world. So again, do check that in advance before you make a purchase of any of those devices. Because again, Synology, there will be a trouble there for saying that. But nevertheless, I do think Synology put forward a nice argument for enterprise level stuff this year. Uh, at that show, but I do know a number of you desktop and disk station users came away thinking, still hungry, still hungry. Where's, where's, the, where's the good stuff? Like the DS220 Plus, where was that? Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, okay, we'll wrap things up here. Do stay tuned on the channel for the rest of the content coming from that trade show last week at Computex and of course Synology's own private event, and where we go back in a couple of months. I will be doing another Q&A. Uh, with Synology, uh, with any luck, and with that happens, because I'm getting all nothing but green lights at the moment, but you never know, so do let me know your questions in the comments, and we'll do the same thing we did before, all of those questions together, and the most frequent 10 questions for 10 subjects, we will get that put forward straight to Synology, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this, I'm going to let Eddie get a word in there, waiting 3, 2, 1, go. Goodbye. You used no. that time wisely, didn't you? <laughs> um, so, thank you so much for watching, we'll see you on the next video, cheerio. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, don't forget to click like and subscribe. And also, there should be some other videos there on the screen. Don't know what they are. Just letting you know about some other videos on the channel that might interest you. And all I've got left to say to you is, if you do find yourself getting beaten by a computer at chess, don't worry. There's no way it's going to beat you at kickboxing.